let's take a look at the map so we finished our week in the Lofoten so the Lofoten are around here and then uh, we had to make our way up to North Cap which is here it's quite a long distance on the way we stopped to Senja um, so it's here so after Finsnes and then we took that road that is following the coast and it's actually quite impressive it's it's not the most amazing landscape you will see but it's always long fjords snowy mountains all along to Alta and then up to North Cape Welcome back, it's Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender Albatros. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. In this episode, we bring you with us to North Cape. Are you ready? There are two elks over there. Elk one and elk two. We're so still. You know how we often say that it is not the destination that matters, but the journey? Well, that is really how we felt that week. The destination was no escape, sure. But we are very thankful we pursued that destination, not only for reaching it, but because it brought us to all the places we show you this week. Let's start from the beginning. First up after leaving the Lofoten was Senja, several times to Norway. More intimate, probably wilder than the Lofoten, we were almost the only visitors around. This northern island has nothing to envy in beauty and we can only warmly recommend it. We made it to Senja, uh, it's an island um, let's say five hours drive north of the Lofoten and we were told it's uh, really nice to stop here because it's much wilder and I think it's a, a bit less touristic also than the Lofoten or oh, maybe it's going to become the <laughs> same and when we arrived it was full 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 covered with snow uh, so we wondered if we would even be able to hike uh, there's quite a few like super nice hikes. I think we're only staying here two days, so we will be able to do only two hikes. Right, the sea level, it's not too... Yeah, there's no snow, so it was better. But now <laughs> we're kind of supposed to go all the way up there. And we're a bit concerned about the relevant like the fact that we have the right shoes to actually do that so we'll see it's me or it's getting deeper oh it's getting deeper we decided that so this one here was a bit too risky or at least we didn't feel confident with our like little trail shoes with this snow ridge that we see here but we picked another one that was not covered with snow and is within the same point of view on the beautiful coast over there.
We arrived at the bivouac in Senja. There is a nice beach. It's not too far from the village, but I think we don't bother anyone where we are. And look at the beach in front. It's very quiet. Uh, just earlier we were at the mountains over there. The beach are actually white sand, so it looks very nice. Also the water is so quiet. The It's the ocean, right? It's just like full ocean. But there's absolutely no wave here. Someone brave would have gone in the water, but I don't know if I feel like it. Maybe the feet. I don't know. It's nice. Mathilde trying to get into the fjord in the seawater. I don't know how she does it. It's so cold. <laughs> Did a little dive in the fjord and now Nick is preparing special tomato pasta simple but efficient yeah simple but quick but delicious welcome to Senja this morning we are very lucky so we have the sand and we also see some dolphin over there it's absolutely gorgeous this place and very wild. It's a tiny bit steep for me. <laughs> Look at this rock, it's huge. I think the other hike goes all the way up there, but it looks super snowy. So we're going for a viewpoint over here. a quick side note and uh, we have these on shoes so we're not affiliated with them at all and we are we actually really like these shoes and uh, they are waterproof we were looking for trail shoes that were light that we could use for walking hiking and for running these shoes are really awesome and we've uh, we've had i mean Mathilde had a pair like this before the only issue and this is just a sort of warning we don't want to uh, say anything negative about the company because we really like what they do and also their image but uh, we just want to give a warning because uh, people that are doing hikes like us or, or trips like us so it means intensive use uh, then you might want to consider looking at other brands as well a month and a half after we left they already have a few little openings that you can see here so there's already a cut here there's already a cut here there's a cut here Mathilde has a huge one here on her shoe and it's uh, quite actually large yeah I had the because those are the trails versions I had the running version uh, two years ago and they were great to run with like super comfy uh, floating feeling like I think they were really good uh, for the feet and, and legs in general but within six or seven months they were torn apart yeah again these shoes are perfect just not, I think, for what we're doing. Enough playing around in the snow. On that note, we left Senja. Next stop, the North Cape. We drove for two days through a variety of landscapes, ranging from white plains 
to fjord coastal roads and the snowy mountains. There was one constant though. We crossed a tons of tunnels. There's a lot of tunnels in Norway. Anywhere in the country, you spend your time in and out of a tunnel. And that's how you beatbox. Nick is trying to reproduce dubstep parties in Norwegian tunnels. That's how wild we're getting. There's not many people on the roads driving to North Cape, but you're never alone. Every corner, every turn, there is a reindeer. Good to know about reindeer. If their head is down and they're eating, you can pass without problem. It's not likely they move. But if their head is up, it's important to slow down to the maximum because they might cross unexpectedly. It seems there's quite a lot of road accidents involving reindeers and cars. So pay attention on the road. What is it that I told you? Nick said if I see a reindeer or a moose, I should drive straight and brake, but I don't turn the steering wheel because I'm the kind of people who turn the steering wheel for uh, flying. So. very funny because we didn't have so warm temperatures since we actually left. Now our thermometer says 15.5 outside and I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's maybe 9 p.m. and I mean it's still a bit cloudy but there's absolutely no wind and like all our setup is outside like Nick is cooking outside and we didn't have that in so long but he wears a jacket you should like i would wear a jacket but it's okay with a t-shirt and we are going to eat inside but with the window open and really the last times we did that we were wearing our like warm jackets also so it's crazy we're approaching the escape and the temperature is so good i think we're arriving the right week ready for dinner we have Nick, pasta, an episode of Eva Zubek, and the sunset. This road 
road exactly a week ago two Swiss bikers told us that it was full of snow and that they couldn't go and so they had to wait for a uh, big truck to come and, and hopefully hitchhike with them and uh, when we came a week later it's super clean it looks like a lot of snow has disappeared already and we're going to official we made it to no escape and Nikki had the most north point of Europe something the most northern point is over there but it was too difficult for the Norwegians to build the property over there so they built it here and everyone believes that it's here we know now we know the most northern point is over there and it's a five hours time to go there and we were thinking about going there it's way too much wind too much wind and there's snow and there's a lot of snow so so we'll check we we'll check but we don't think so taking me if not I'd be probably stuck in Orca and uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm had a week without classes uh, of uni and I said well let's hitchhike to Orca so I started in Hamburg where I'm studying now and uh, made it this morning to Orca after five days and a morning and yeah now I gotta get back to Hamburg and uh, this was a first for me because I I've never had a long hitchhiking trip and uh, I'm trying to do it and I'm doing it so far without money and they were asking me why or why no how basically and well the transport part is easy you just hitchhike you have a lot of patience and the for the food part I mean there's so much food waste uh, that sometimes you're gonna just gonna find edible food in the dumpsters, which a lot of people do. Um, people are usually kind and will help you out. And uh, yeah, you just really find your way. And by the way, I'm from uh, Galicia. <laughs> Saludos, Saludos a Terriña. <laughs> and uh, do you have any other big projects like this Oof. in the future? No, now I gotta get back to studying really. A um, dream project. Um, a dream, dream project. project. I was talking to Nick before, maybe in three, four years, uh, bike in the Americas, Alaska to Patagonia. Nice. Who knows? Yeah, that's a good one. Thanks, Jago. No problem. Jago was going back through Sweden. We left him at a crossroad with banana and noodles and continued the way. And that concluded our loop to Cape North. Cape North is often presented by other travellers as a big detour and long road just for a parking and a picture. It is often described as just a foggy and cold place. Maybe it was the good weather, maybe it was because we did not focus so much on the destination but rather the journey there, but we really enjoyed the way up there. It's insane. We left uh, North Cape uh, maybe an, two hours ago. We had lunch and so we're still in the northern Norway going towards Finland. We're actually an hour 20 from Finland and right now it is super sunny and if we look up here you can see it is actually 20 degrees. It's, uh, it's insane. I was just wearing a t-shirt and it was perfect. It's amazing because we are just now getting used to the summer. A lot of the other European countries are already experiencing t-shirts and shorts and also other countries around that horizon. And today is the first day we're actually doing that, so summer's coming for us as well. It was time for us to say goodbye to Norway. Later that day, we drove full south to cross the Finnish border. Little hint on Finland. It is going to be a lot of off-road. We will show you all of that next week, but it's so different from Norway. 
If you are curious, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of what's coming up next. See you next week! We made it to Finland! Whee! Yay! One more country! One more country! We almost missed the, the border crossing because it's really not obvious. Ah, the real border post is actually here. Thank you.